Stephen in Parker, Colorado, just down the road a piece. Um, hey, Paul, since you are the only audiophile I know who also has a record label, <laughs> we, we are rare. I, I was wondering, what is your thought about microphone preamplifiers and mics needing phantom power, self-powered studio monitors, and ADCs? Should I leave them on, especially the mic preamps, or do you leave them off and turn the phantom power off so that the condensers in the microphones don't wear out? I know you said leaving your hi-fi system on is a good idea, and that's something we talked about yesterday. But what about my recording equipment? Well, I, I, again, I would give the same basic advice that I gave yesterday about your, your general equipment. Leave it on if it's solid state, turn it off if it's vacuum tubes. Now, at Octave Records, as this audio file runs a recording studio as well, called Octave Records, we pretty much use exclusively manly vacuum tube preamplifiers for our microphones. I, I, Ivana is, is a good friend, but her products, the manly vacuum tube microphone preamplifiers, oh, I, I've tried everything, you know, we, we have for cells, we have graces, excellent. I mean, and they're good. And sometimes we'll use those because we need a little bit more snap or, or whatever. But for 99% of everything that we do at Octave Records, we stay with those manlies. And I got to tell you, they are just honey sweet, defining. They, they maintain the harmonic integrity of all the instruments. I just, every time I listen to music played through those preamps, I, I just fall in love. So those we turn off. Now, many people probably don't know what he's talking about when he says phantom power. <clears throat> so in pro audio, in recording studios, we use what's called phantom power to power microphones. So many microphones... If, if we divide microphones up, you have dynamic microphones, and those have no circuitry in them at all. They're the standard kind of microphone. You probably had one of those at your, at your school auditorium. And I use dynamic microphones all the time, especially around drums. So we, we'll use a dynamic mic for the snares. I have one on top and bottom. We'll use it for the kick drum. They're excellent for that because they can handle huge amounts of dynamic range and they, and they sound wonderful. But when we want to capture harmonics, when we want to capture intricate details of things, we then switch over to a type of microphone called a condenser. And condenser microphones are kind of like a planar ribbon tweeter. Uh, here's the tweeter in the mid-range. These are both planars in reverse. So this has an extremely thin uh, diaphragm of, of material that is so light, it actually has less mass than the air that it is moving. And if you flip that around, a proper condenser microphone, a large capsule particularly, maybe it's about an inch or so big for the capsule, there are smaller ones, bigger ones, it basically has the same thing. It has this ultra low mass diaphragm and instead of moving the air, the air moves it, and we do the opposite, right? So, and we've talked about this before. Speakers and microphones are pretty much the same thing. They're just working in reverse. So a speaker has an electromagnet that when you put energy into it, creates a magnetic field. It pushes and pulls the diaphragm in and out. In a microphone, the air pushes and pulls the diaphragm in and out, and there is that same electromagnet coil of wire nearby, and it's generating a voltage in that coil. So remember, coils, if, if you pass a magnet back and forth, it makes electricity. If you put electricity into it, it makes a magnetic field. So I, I know that's a very simplified explanation because condenser microphones actually work 
slightly differently, but let, let, let's, not, let's not go there right now because that's unimportant to our discussion. But the point is, these condenser microphones have little preamplifiers, little electronic stages inside, and they need power. Where do they get that power? They get that from what we call phantom power, which is a 48 volt DC voltage that is sent down the line from the preamplifier to the electronics that are running these condenser microphones. And that's what he's asking me about. Should those stay on? And again, if you have solid state equipment and if your condenser microphone is solid state, by all means, leave it on. As a matter of practice, I don't do it. And I, I, our microphones are just really expensive. The Neumanns that we use are all vacuum tubes. So just as a matter of practice, we turn everything off. That's kind of simple, but yeah, you can certainly leave it on. Anyway, a long ramble. I hope that helped a little bit, maybe give you a little view into what goes on in the recording world. All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.